Thanks, Gordon. Yeah, actually, that patient that you introduced me to, she was the index case in her family, as I recall, and she was diagnosed while pregnant with a pheochromocytoma. Yeah, and then her mom was found to be also immune to and had uh, you know, calcitonin levels that were like greater than 40,000, but no evidence of structural disease. So she survived all this. Her mom survived all that. I think she thought she was invincible. Um, and then uh, she got sick. So uh, what I'd like to talk about today, again, is mostly relevant for people with MEN2 who have had both adrenal glands removed. Um, in 2015, endocrinology is, you know, great thing to practice because we have all these hormones and we can give them back to you. Um, these are all systems that you don't need to think about until one of these glands gets taken out. And with the adrenal glands, um, we can't just give you a pill a day and everything's going to be fine necessarily. So you need to use your brain to help uh, modulate the levels a little bit. So uh, when I was thinking about this talk, I thought of a few questions that I'd like to try to answer. but. Um, you don't have to wait to the end to interrupt me if you have any questions. Just uh, speak up. I'm going to talk a little bit about what these adrenal glands do, uh, what goes wrong when things are low, and how about if we give you too much uh, adrenal hormones. And so you've already seen some of this anatomy. Uh, the adrenal glands are perched on top of the kidneys. We've got two of them. Uh, and when you slice them in half, there's uh, different layers. And each layer makes a different kind of hormone. Uh, the medulla is a central part. That's where the noradrenaline and adrenaline come from. Those are the fight or flight hormones, and that's where the pheochromocytoma comes from. The surrounding tissue is making other hormones that are uh, changing throughout the day and keeping your blood pressure healthy. And those are the ones that we give you back when we remove the adrenal glands. And so I'm going to talk about each of those in turn a little bit. Um, this is kind of a too busy slide, but it just shows you the different hormones that um, are made in each of the layers. So um, aldosterone is the first one I'm going to talk about. Uh, the next one is cortisol. These are steroids. People refer to them as just steroids, but cortisol is the main one. Uh, and then we've got some big names here to add to your list. So DHEA is uh, dehydroepiandrosterone sulfate, and then androstene dynin. And these are male hormones, um, and I'll talk a little bit about those. So first, aldosterone. Um, aldosterone is important uh, to maintain a normal blood pressure. And this is changing throughout the day. Uh, when you lie down and get up, it changes. Um, if you get dehydrated, it changes. So uh, the kidney is, is controlling aldosterone. And the kidney is filtering blood and can tell you when the blood volume is going down. So if you give some blood or something, or you get dehydrated, uh, the kidney senses this and sends signals that tell the adrenal gland to make more aldosterone. And this aldosterone, in turn, is going to do a few things. The main thing it's going to do is try to bring up the blood volume by telling the kidney to hang on to salt. And so when we think about salt in the kidney, it's really we're thinking about water. And so you know, if you drink a lot of, well, if you go out and have a big salty meal, you may feel swollen, especially on a day like today, uh, where you're so humid. So uh, when you increase salt, your body doesn't want to uh, be too salty so it hangs on to more water and keeps the salt, salt, salt level stable. And so by controlling salt, you can control the volume. The other thing that happens in the kidney, it just turns out, is that to hold on to salt, the kidney dumps out potassium. It's either one. And so this is a way for the body to get rid of potassium. And you may wonder why would you need to do that. I don't know. Um, I guess if you eat like a dozen bananas, maybe you have to filter some of that potassium. Um, but there are, are, there are other disease states where you can have potassium go high. So aldosterone's main issues then again are sodium and potassium. And in controlling sodium, it's controlling the blood volume. Uh, so if you don't have enough aldosterone, you can get dehydration. And this can lead to a low blood pressure. And this can cause you to fall and to pass out. And if you have very low sodium, your brain doesn't work right, you start to get confused and it can lead to seizure. Um, and then a high potassium level, it turns out, uh, potassium is important for the electrical systems in the muscles. And if your potassium is very high, the main thing we worry about is that your heart's going to not beat right, right and end up in like a ventricular fibrillation. It's not compatible with life. 
and that can kill you. Um, so aldosterone, you need. How about cortisol? So cortisol, uh, when we think about steroids, probably not the first thing you think about is sugar, but cortisol's main action is to raise blood sugar, um, I think. Um, and that's because the brain needs glucose. And so in between meals, we got to make sure that the glucose in the blood stays stable so that your brain can work. And cortisol is really important for that. You know that cortisol and steroids can affect your immune system. So every summer I get into our poison ivy, and then I get a burst of prednisone, and that gets better. So it controls my immune system. Um, it does a couple other things. The adrenaline, for example, that we've talked about that we know can raise blood pressure, doesn't really work without cortisol present. So cortisol will raise your blood pressure, and it allows a bunch of other hormones to help your blood pressure stay high. And so if you, well, we'll come back to that. Cortisol is a little bit different. It's controlled mostly by the time of day. So if you sleep at night, in the morning when you wake up, your cortisol levels go up. And maybe this is because you're awake during the day and you need to be more active. Your glucose has to be higher. You have to be prepared for the stress of the day. And then at night it goes down. Uh, stress raises cortisol. And stress we think of as like I broke my arm or I've got gastroenteritis. Uh, that's stress, and your body needs to have more cortisol to maintain a blood pressure and keep you alive. And we talked about how low glucose raises cortisol. All right, so the pituitary and the brain are mostly controlling cortisol production. And so what happens if you're low in cortisol? Well, your skin gets darker. So if this were not July, I could look around the room and see who maybe wasn't taking their steroids, um, because they might look tan. Like, uh, JFK, so John F. Kennedy had Addison's disease, which is an autoimmune destruction of the adrenal glands. Uh, you get nausea, you get abdominal pain. These can be vague symptoms of low cortisol. You just kind of feel lousy, you don't want to eat, you feel kind of weak. Uh, your sugar can go low, you can have low sodium, you can have some of the similar effects of low aldosterone. You can get dehydrated and this can, this can lead to death. So, and this is something that can happen rapidly. And when it, it's happening rapidly, we call it adrenal crisis. And so this is where you've got a, you know, you don't have your adrenal glands, you're on hydrocortisone, and you're out on your bike and you get hit by a car, and you don't have your medical alert on, and you're unconscious at the scene, and the EMTs don't know that they need to give you steroids immediately, right? So that's why you need to wear the, 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 the medical alert. In the case of our, our Cord and I, the person that we know, her whole family got gastroenteritis, one after another. And then it hit her at like one in the morning. And she woke up and started getting sick and then just lay on the floor and couldn't get up and didn't have the energy to call. Uh, she lay there for a few hours until uh, her daughter came home. And so for her, she was never thinking that she wouldn't be able to call for help. And she couldn't, all right? So now she wears a medical alert. Um, I want to just briefly talk about these male hormones. So DHEAS, if you take off the sulfate and move one hydrogen, you've got testosterone. So these are very close to testosterone. And in humans, we think that their main role is right before puberty. We call it adrenarche. This is where you get hair in your armpits, all right? And that's what, this, well, that's what these adrenal hormones are doing in both men and women. And we don't really think that they have a big role later in life. Uh, it's a little bit unclear. I think there's some people who think that maybe this is important for women to feel well, quality of life. Um, there's not great data, though, to say that that's, a, that's important. So we don't often give back this hormone um, after an adrenalectomy, a bilateral adrenalectomy, but it's something we think about. All right, so just to summarize quickly, because I'm running a little late, um, aldosterone again, so it's going to increase salt, it's going to increase your blood volume, and it's going to help you get rid of potassium. The cortisol you need to maintain a blood pressure, maintain glucose, and to regulate your immune system, and then body hair. All right. Um, oops. All right, so the treatment that you may already know. So aldosterone, the equivalent we call fluoronef, food your cortisone. It's taken once a day. Typically, half, 0.05 to 0.1 milligrams. All this can change depending on your other medications. Um, we mostly adjust this based on how you feel. So if you get up in the morning and you feel like you're going to pass out, then you may need more of this. But we can also look at your sodium. 
We can look at your potassium, and we can look at some of those kidney signals to say, are you on the right dose of iron? Um, and it turns out that not everybody needs this. And so uh, we usually like you to be honest, but some people eat a lot of salt, and some people are on higher steroid doses, and so maybe they don't need this. Um, cortisol, you may know, comes in a couple of different flavors. There are shorter acting ones like hydrocortisone. And here we're trying to mimic what happens during the day. So your cortisol levels are highest in the morning, and then they're low later in the day. So we give you a big dose in the morning and then a lower dose in the afternoon. Uh, prednisone and dexamethasone last longer. They're taken once a day. Um, we try to give you the lowest dose we can that you still feel like you can feel good. We don't have a lab test to tell us that you're on the right dose. All right, so if you feel like you're going to pass out, if you're feeling lousy, you may need more. And we challenge that by keep trying, trying to go down on your dose. Um, but you have to remember that this is something that you're going to need more of when you're not well. I had a patient recently who was on this drug. It was a new thing for her. And she went out and ran a half marathon and passed out. And she didn't realize that, oh, i got to take more on that day um, before she came to see me. So, um, so on just regular increased stress in life like that, you may need to adjust your dose. Um, and then when you're severely ill, we usually give it through an IV. Uh, and this is the slide just to remind you that you need to get some kind of medical alert. There are lots of different flavors. Um, now, what about excess cortisol? Just really quickly, this is a really old cartoon. You can see that here, cortisol is low at night and it goes up in the morning. If you're just on one dose all day long, you can see your cortisol is kind of steady all day. And you're getting a lot more than you need here, and maybe you're just getting enough in the morning here. And it may not seem like much, but over years, this can lead to too much cortisol, causing what we call Cushing syndrome. And so Cushing syndrome is cortisol excess, and it looks like this. So um, you get obese. You get weak. You get kind of a ruddy complexion. Uh, you have no energy. Uh, you eventually get high blood pressure and diabetes. All right? So this is not what you want, uh, unless you're this guy, um, patient S. All right, so too much cortisol leads to hypertension, uh, diabetes, and obesity like we talked about. It causes thinning of the skin, uh, causes bruising. Uh, it can decrease your mood. Almost everybody complains of no sex drive. It causes bone loss, which is a big one, and weakness. And this is what we want to avoid. Right? So uh, we really try to dial down the dose as much as we can. Um, and that's, that's it. Any questions? Questions for Dr. Tuck? No questions. I, I'll tell you, the thing that I, I wanted to just um, emphasize here was that how fast um, uh, a person in adrenal crisis can go from feeling Eh, okay, to just having no ability to do anything. I, mean, I think you said she wasn't able to call for help. Can you elaborate? Like, what does that mean? Like, why sh why couldn't she? Uh, I think she if you could come in front of the camera, it'd be better. Just, I mean, <laughs> I hope she's not streaming. And like, no, no, no. But I, no, we're not using any personal but, um, names here. But why might a person not be able to call for help who's having a dream? I think for her, uh, essentially, it's what we call being in shock. So you don't have enough blood pressure to keep your brain working. And she was really dehydrated from throwing up in the gastroenteritis. Uh, her blood pressure was undetectable by the EMTs when they arrived. Um, she was somehow still conscious. She um, had a very low blood sugar. She was in multi-organ failure when she got to the hospital. Uh, she's 100% now. Yeah, um, she's fine now. But uh, it's just like, <laughs> it's, uh, she was in shock. She's a, She's, she's on pillows, obviously, from another planet or something. Uh, uh, I guess what I wanted to, I, I, I interviewed this patient afterwards. And I, a round of applause for that. Thanks very much. And I've done this for some years now, and I, I didn't appreciate this myself, but uh, by report, the, the spell comes on so fast that you just don't have time to do anything about it. You might know all this stuff, you might have all this information. But it can hit you so fast that you just don't. But you know, when it hits you, you're just too weak to do anything. So that's the message I want you to get. OK, I'm really excited about this next talk because I love watching videos of brain surgery. And if you've not seen a video of brain surgery you're about to, 
Uh, you might want to be a little careful if you're a little kid, but I, it's actually not too bad, right? It's rated G, isn't it? Yes, okay, good. So, uh, or PG, PG, good, 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 good. Even better. All right, so I'm going to bring to the podium uh, Oren Block to tell us about pituitary adenomas, which are uh, uh, things that uh, MEN1 patients will get with some frequency, and then this is the treat one of the treatment options that we have for it. So here's Oren.